eventually you're going to run into that you have a lot of elements going on on your timeline. And to eliminate confusion, you really want it to be nice and clean and decluttered. Let's take a look at this first method, nesting. What is nesting and how do we use it? With nesting, what Premiere Pro does is it's going to take all of your clips and turn it into one. This is great for applying effects or transitions across the board. And if you do social media editing, you really want to think about utilizing nesting. So right now, I have a sequence that's ready for Instagram TV. But as you can see, when I scroll, my clips aren't so much. They're 16 by 9 instead of 9 by 16. Let's quickly take a look on how we get that infamous blurred background on social media. We're going to use our shortcut to duplicate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my bottom clip. I'm going to head over to effects and I'm going to scale this up. Now it looks kind of distorted. We have a clear background and we also have a clear foreground. I'm going to head over to effects and I'm going to search blur. I'm going to apply and I'm going to increase my blur. So now what happens in my foreground and my background, it's going to be similar but I am complying with Instagram TV's 9 by 16 format. But what happens if I wanted to add multiple effects or a transition? Let's say I wanted to add a dissolve. If I add a dissolve to my top clip, you can see that my bottom clip is still there. I really don't want to start lining up on a lot of dissolves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit undo. I'm going to select all. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select nest. I'm going to name this clip. And as you can see, I have one clip that has been created. If I head back over to my project bin, you can see now I could easily pull it up within my project bin also. So let's head back over to our effects and add this cross dissolve. Now when I play, you can see that the entire clip starts to fade out as opposed to before where it was one clip and then the other. I could always access my clips by double clicking and I'm back to my original setup. So if I wanna individually manipulate, I can always go ahead and double click on a nest. But the nice thing about nesting is just like with master clip and paste attributes, I can go ahead and apply effects across the board. So let's say I wanted to blur all of this. I could grab my blur and watch what happens. The entire clip starts to blur. Now I don't want to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it, but it's a nice option to have if I want to start adding an effect to all the clips across the board. Another thing that's very useful with nesting is there's going to be times that you run into effects that they just don't go together. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's head over to our next clip. And I kind of want to slow this change down. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to select my speed and duration. I'm going to select 50 and hit OK. 
So now when we play, the colors slowly change and it could be reflected in the lens. But there's also a little jitter in there. So I want it to be as stable as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for my warp stabilization. And then I'm going to apply. And as you can see, I receive an error. Using speed and warp stabilization together, they just don't go. You're always going to get an error within Adobe Premiere. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit undo to make sure that my warp stabilization is no longer there. I'm going to right click and let's select nest. Let's name it. And now if we go back to our project bin, you can see I now have a new nest sequence. I'm going to head back over to my effects and I'm going to apply warp stabilizer. You can see that now Premiere Pro is analyzing the file and I was able to use both my speed, convert my file into a nest sequence and that allowed me to use my warp stabilization. Another great thing about nesting is instead of going ahead and copying all of your clips within your sequence and then pasting into another sequence, that's going to cause a lot of clutter. What you can do is you can nest all of your clips together and bring that nested clip into your new sequence. Now the interesting thing about nesting is Premiere Pro is a video focused program. So if we start adding up a lot of audio, we're not going to be able to nest it. It only nests video. If you come into this scenario that you need to do a multi-track edit, you might want to think about starting out in Adobe Audition and then exporting it and bringing your audio file into Premiere Pro. So we took a look at nesting, but let's see what other options we have. You can see that I have a lot of different elements going on. I want to think about maybe creating a backup for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all and select sub sequence. Now it doesn't look like anything happened. But if I head over to my project bin, you can see that a sequence has been created. This is great if you want to do revision editing. Both of these methods are going to help you, whether it's housing clips together to make effects easier to be applied or creating a backup of your work. Either way, it is going to help you along with your project.